Avante, he needs a special knee. We play for Joanne Love. She has bronch or he has bronch. Is it Joanna? Um, bronch pneumonia and bronchitis. And then we also want to pray for David Cook. He needs a healing. He has cancer. We want to pray for David Price. He's been in the. He's been sick all week. We want a miracle of healing for him. And if you have a special need, you can just raise your hand. We know that God's going to step in and do more than he's God's going to come to you right now. Faith in him. You know how the truth and the truth of work that needs to be done. You've got every name that has been mentioned. And touch the body right now. Lord, that you know the need that is going on in his body. We pray that you're sure when the need is to the work that needs to be done.
guest, a warm welcome to Mr. Jackson. Have you in the house of the Lord for that today? Let's give these singers and musicians a big hand. Have a good song. Remind you that after service this morning, our young people are going to be uh, selling dinners, uh, raising some money for uh, Youth Congress. And so, uh, if you would go back there and support our young people, that will be after service. And uh, so, we still have a little time. Uh, so, let's go back and support our youth. Amen. Praise God. Now you love the Lord, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great God you serve. Yeah. I'm uh, going to read from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1, beginning at verse number 1. Chapter 1, again reading at verse number 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit hath a man of all his labor, which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also arises, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north, whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see this is new. It hath been already of old time which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Vanity of vanity, said the preacher. Vanity of vanity, all is vanity. Lord, I thank you for your presence we feel in the house today each and every one that's here this morning and I pray <clears throat> that you will anoint me to minister your word anoint this congregation to hear to receive your word to respond to it in a very positive way today you come here today to minister to hearts lives to change lives You're here today to see people change in directions the right directions in their lives. And I pray in Jesus' name for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon us all today. Minister now, we pray in the wonderful name of Jesus. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands and magnify the Lord together. You may own many mansions, much silver and much gold. You may have success in life, fill your wish with your gold. But all of this won't save you, nor satisfy your soul, unless you have 
salvation, my friend, you missed your goal. Uh, on the beach, 
Some of you might have even built some yourself. And uh, there's been some very amazing uh, castles, sand castles that have been built. Some of them have several towers and a moat and maybe even a bridge. And uh, amazing the talent that some people have in, in building these sand castles. But then all of a sudden the tide comes in. And their castles come down. Not just a little bit down, but all the way down. I mean, by the time the ocean gets through with it, there's nothing left. In fact, some of them might even sit in front of their castle trying to protect it. But they soon find that that doesn't work. The tide comes in anyway, and there's not even a trace left of their castles. I wonder how many castles have been built exactly where they built theirs. Hundreds, maybe, thousands even, but they're all gone, every one of them. The earth and sea reclaim them all, removing even a trace of these sand castles. Now, it, it, it wasn't destroyed from lack of planning. They planned out how they were going to build it. In fact, I'm sure some, even before they got to the beach, they sat down and they drew a diagram of how they were going to build their castle. And so it was not destroyed because they did not plan. Yes, they planned out how they were going to build it even before they got there. Amen. Uh, it, it wasn't destroyed from a lack of effort. No, they, they tried really hard to build a great sand castle. And, and you can just look at the castle, the finished product, and, and you know that there was a lot of effort that was put into building that castle. And so it wasn't destroyed from lack of, of, of effort. So what was its downfall? I can agree with the preacher here in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 14 when he said, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Amen. And this preacher, he, the son of David, Solomon, we're talking about here today. What a, what a great man of wisdom he was. Amen. And yet he talked about seeing all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, he said, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Amen. He tried wisdom. Ecclesiastes 1, 17 and 18. He said, I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. <coughs> Verse 18, he said, for in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. He writes again in Ecclesiastes 2 and 16, For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man as a fool, he says. And so he tried wisdom. And then he tried pleasure. Ecclesiastes 2 and 1. I said in my heart, go to now. I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. Here he is seeking and searching for something to build his life on. Thinking that surely this is a good foundation to build upon. Wisdom and knowledge and pleasure. And the excitement of all of this. And, and yet after he tried those things. The psalmist said. Behold this also is vanity. Amen. Not only that. But he tried all sorts of stuff. He records it here in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 4. Through 11, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards. And I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. Amen. 
I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me all silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I gathered me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Now verse number 11, he said, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Amen. It is here, if you're not careful, that man can become bitter. So what was the problem in people's sand castles on the beach? And what was the problem in Solomon's life? Ironically, the answer is the same. They were built upon the wrong foundation. The castles, the sand castles were built on the wrong foundation. Amen. Solomon was trying to build his life on a foundation, but the foundation that he was trying to build on were the wrong foundation. Amen. The Apostle Paul, writing in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11 through 13, he said, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Amen. So what will stand if not this? So what is the right foundation that a person needs to build their life upon. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35 tells us that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Amen. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Yeah. I'm talking about a foundation here today oh, yeah. that is a strong, sure, solid foundation that you can build your life upon. Yeah. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 through 18, he says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, Amen. yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Day. Yes, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Yes. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. Yes. And then he continues in chapter 5, verse 1. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, Amen. we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Amen. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. I'm talking about a solid foundation today. And it's as the old song says, On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is seeking sand. All other ground is seeking 
king stand. I'm telling you today that Jesus Christ and his word is the only true and solid foundation for you to build your life on. It is not wisdom. It is not knowledge. It is not pleasure. It is not the carnal material things of this life. It is not houses and land. It is not popularity and fortune and fame. I'm telling you it's on Jesus Christ the solid rock and his word that I build my life because that is the solid foundation. Moses had a choice. He had all of the wealth of Egypt. He had all of the pleasures that could be found and could be wanted and desired in Egypt. But the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the children of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for only a season. Am I talking to somebody here today that you've been trying to build your life on wisdom on knowledge, on education, on pleasure, on the carnal things of this world. You're finding out today, and I guess probably the reason you're here this morning is because you realize that you're not finding lasting satisfaction and real joy and real peace and a solid foundation in the things that this world has to offer. Amen. I'm offering you something here today that's solid. I'm offering you something here today that has stood the test and it will continue to stand the test. It's Jesus Christ, the solid foundation. His word that will never pass away. And if you will obey His word and not just be a hearer only, but a doer of His word, you will start building your life on a foundation with everything else around you is coming to the ground. Your life will stand the storms of life and the test of time. The foundation is Jesus Christ and His word. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. How for the hides do I get on that solid foundation? Obey His word. Amen. Obey His word. Amen. And His word says, repent and be baptized to every one of you yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Amen. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Amen. Obey the gospel. Be identified with the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is just what I said. Repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And your life will be changed and turned around. And you'll plant your feet on a rock that's solid and true and sure foundation. Amen. Walk in the ways of the Lord. Be not conformed to this world. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. I'm talking about living a life of holiness and separation from this world. And I'm telling you, you'll be building your life on the foundation. When everything else comes around you, your life will stand the test of time. I'm so glad for the day that I started building my life on that solid foundation. Have I got any witnesses in the house today? Have I got any glad for the day that you turned from the things of this world that you were trying to build your life on? You found out nothing, nothing. It's like the solid foundation of Jesus Christ and His words. I'm going to build my life on. Yes, this world. It has a lot to offer, I know. And this world throws its lures. And this world says, come on, try this, build on this. Come on, you can enjoy this, you can have that. And people have tried it only to see their sand castles destroy when the tides of life come in. But I'm so glad that through the years that I've been living for the Lord a long time, and I, my life has endured a lot of storms and a lot of tests, of time, but I'm glad to tell you today, my feet are still planted on that solid rock. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No, it's not my own strength and my own power, but it's that solid foundation that has never trembled just a little bit. It's never moved just a little bit. It has been firm and solid. I'm telling 
and there is safety and there is security when you know you're built on a solid, firm foundation. Praise God, praise God. Oh, Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. As we stand to our feet right now, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking but God the minister. I wonder who in the service today the Lord has talked to your heart through this short, simple message today to just remind us that if you build your life on another foundation other than Jesus Christ and His Word, when the storms of life come, when the tide comes in, your castle will crumble to the ground. Your life will fall apart. I wonder who in this service today is ready to say, Lord, I'm ready to change foundation. I'm ready to put my life on you. I'm ready to cast everything upon you and begin to build the rest of my life on Jesus Christ and His Word. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I wonder, are you here today? You just slip your hand up and put it down. And say, for the hearts, pray for me. I realize that I have been building my life on the wrong foundation. But I need, I need to change today. Would you just slip your hand up, put it down. God sees all of these hands this morning. Praise God. Sister Hodge is going to sing. And I want the church to begin to pray. Let the Holy Ghost begin to move through this congregation. I feel Holy Ghost conviction in the house right now. And the Lord is trying to get through to some hearts here today. To get them to change direction. To get them to understand that all of their work and everything and all the efforts and all the planning that they've been doing. Solomon says it's all vanity. It's all vanity outside of God. It's all vanity outside of God. It's all going to burn up one day. It's all going to be washed away one day. But I'm talking to you about something today that's going to last throughout eternity. You want to build on Jesus Christ and His Word. It's just a hot sake. Would you lift your voice in church and let's pray for people here today who need to change and need to get on a solid foundation before they leave the service this morning. My hope is built mm. on oh, nothing less. Oh, yes. But Jesus Christ and righteousness. Mm.